Hey guys, it's Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and it's Sunday rather than Friday, but things got a little crazy, staying up too late watching all the D&D live streams, which were awesome, so be on the lookout for those to hit Twitch at some point. But anyway, this is your D&D update. We got a lot of cool stuff that came from the Twitch stream and the Sword Coast Adventure Guide unlocks and a few other cool, interesting things, so stay tuned. So first off, well that's really close on me, but anyway, let's start off with uh, some of your Rage of Demon stuff. Again, I feel like this is kind of pointless. Um, we have Belfoss this time, Devourer of Hope. Um, Type of Madness, Reckless Ambition, Overconfidence to the Point of Foolish Abandon, and His Madness Manifests, Complete Disregard for the Lives of Others in... Uh, for the lives and needs of others, rebellion without cause or purpose, murderous rage at the smallest insult, terrifying nightmares, and obsessive study of demonic magic. We're pretty much out of these. Again, I feel like since the book's been out, this is kind of pointless, but we're only like three to four weeks away from Sword Coast Adventure Guide, so that's really exciting, and we have a bunch of stuff to talk about with that. Um, real quick, uh, this month's September customer favorites on Audible, Archmage, the new R.A. Salvatore Legend of Drist book is on here with a 4.7 out of 5 rating, 360 ratings total. Um, it's a 13 hour audiobook, so if that's your kind of thing, you might want to check that out. Obviously, I, this would have been better for the end of this week, but it's more current, so I figured you guys would want to know about it sooner. In case you've been living under a rock, in case you haven't watched any of these videos, this was the tabletop weekend for Extra Life. So Dungeons & Dragons has a big team together, and you can see right here their goal was 100,000. Unfortunately, they didn't read it, reach it. As of currently, the goal of 100,000 is for the end of the year, I should put out. But as of right now, they've made uh, $84,148. Um, and well, these donations obviously go to Kids and Knees and Children's Miracle Network. This is where they also have their Twitch, uh, their Twitch stream right in here. Um, and then again, this isn't up to date, which is there's so much. This is another reason why I want to make this video. Stuff is all over the place, so you can ignore this. This isn't up to date. This showed you the schedule of who was streaming when, um, and that's that. But the reason I came to this is because this is the overall D and D team website, where it shows everybody rolled up. Like if you click this, the official Dungeons and Dragons Extra Life channel itself raised sixteen thousand of that eighty four. So if you think about that, how many other people raised 3,000, 4,000, so on, on the way down? Um, this is the official D&D Extra Life, though, the one that raised that 16,000, so we're going to look at some of the stuff. There are still rewards and things available, so I would, um, I'd look into this, but they had all, like I mentioned, they have all sorts of cool stuff. Every hour, at least until this morning, in the last couple hours, they were giving away something new. Um, you could get all sorts of cool tokens and minis and books and signed things and custom art and craziness. So, I don't know, what is this? This is uh, dice. This has got to be a, uh, I guess. Oh, see, these are just starter packs. Or uh, mini packs, rather. Uh, there's Warforged and all sorts of classic mini packs. There are also more modern mini packs, um, like this Rage of Demons booster pack is a more modern mini pack by um, WizKids for 5th edition. Um, and again, getting you would pre you would pay for this, you'd get whatever you purchased. You'd also get uh, and then there were different hourly incentives. Like when I pre-purchased the one thing that I bought, um, which was like a giant mini pack, I got a Tiamat pin, a Penny Arcade Tiamat pin. They were also at one point giving away water bottles, like uh, steel D&D ampersand uh, logoed water bottles. Um, they were doing Sword Coast Adventure, uh, Sword Coast Legends, I'm sorry, Sword Coast Legends um, codes for the game. They did a good old games pack at the beginning, so you could get like uh, Icewind Dale and Baldur Gate and things like that. Um, and again, this were all free shipping to anywhere in the world, so if you lived in a place where you can't normally get these things and shipping is super expensive, this was available to you. Um, they had some really cool big minis. They had a Bahamut big uh, mini. Um, it's not a mini, really. It's a statue at that point. Um, they had the. They just see the ancient attack wing silver dragon. Um, so that would work as a mini or for your game of attack wing. Um, and then here's we're gonna go through these um, the different unlocks that we received. Um, 
and it's unfortunate because, like I said, it's 84,148, and they had said if they could somehow get to 85,000 before the end of the 48 hours, they would have unlocked Durga early, and we could have had that now rather than having to wait. And maybe if we're lucky, they'll still give it out um, in the weeks coming, but... Um, first up, we have the preface of the Sword Coast Adventures Guide. Um, I'm not going to read this because it's just a preface to a book. It's kind of just like a teaser. They just wanted to put it in there. This one is big, though. The Table of Contents. This is something I was very excited for because I was hoping for something a little bit more in-depth, but we can glean a lot of information from this. So, there's a history of, the, of Faerun and the Sword Coast and the Realms. Um, there's a, this has a couple of the Sword Coast in the North, so it has the Lord's Alliance you thought they would have had, um, you know, maybe breakdowns of all the factions. Some, no new races, unfortunately, no new races, mind you, not sub-races, but core races, so everything else is here. And some of this you can kind of glean the amount of pages, like, for instance, it looks like humans have two whole pages. Whereas half elves have one page, and half orcs have one page, and tieflings have, well, maybe two pages based on the chapter jump. So, again, kind of get an idea of what you're looking for. You see under classes, every class has something listed here. Um, New Primal Paths for Barbarians, there's a bunch listed for bards, harpers, bardic college, and musical instruments. Clerics, it says Divine Domain, it's only one page. Druid Circles, only one page. Fighters, kind of martial archetype. Does this mean we're going to get something more like a fist-fighty, kung-fu-type fighter, like a monk fighter, or maybe um, something Tome of Battle-esque, like um, Sword Sage, or something to that effect? Uh, then you have monks, uh, monastic orders, and monastic traditions, so possibly some new ways to do that. Paladins, you have a thing on Paladin Orders and Sacred Oath, so who knows what that means. What? It's Wizards of the Coast, so why not? Rangers is one line, nothing underneath it, and it only covers one page. Rangers really get the short end of the stick. At least it seems. I could be wrong, but that's what it seems like. Rogues, roguish archetypes. We already know that we're getting the Mastermind, which we had unveiled, and we know we're going to get the Swashbuckler as well. So that, just to give you reference, that's two archetypes in the course of two pages. So, um, Sorcerers have Sorcerer's Origin. Warlocks, patrons in the realm, and the otherworldly patron, which we've heard a little bit about. Uh, wizards, and then we have wizardly groups and arcane traditions. And then this is kind of a weird thing. Cantrips for sorcerers, warlocks, and wizards. Makes me think that nobody else is getting new cantrips. Possibly nobody else is getting new spells. Because right after that, it jumps into backgrounds, and we can see there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 new backgrounds. So that's pretty big. City Watch, Clan Crafter, Cloistered Scholar, Courtier, uh, Faction Agent, Far Traveler, Inheritor, Knight of the Order, Mercenary Veteran, Urban Bounty Hunter, Uthgard Tribe Member, and Water Davian Noble. Um, a couple of class options. This could, this seems like not a lot, but it might actually unveil some new stuff. It has class options in other worlds. It might be little variants, or it might just be like, reflavor this text to fit to Greyhawk, or to fit to Eberron, or however you want to do that. An index, which means the book's about 160-ish pages long. Um, and then this is where you really get into it. In these sidebars, you can glean a lot more information from this. And at first, I thought I was like a little bummed about it. But let's take a look. So we'll scroll down to around the 103 page. So Dwarven Clans of the North. Um, we don't know much about that, but we know Durger is coming. Rare Elf sub-races makes me think we're probably going to see the Eladrin, which we saw in the Dungeon Master's Guide, as a full published race in this book. Um, other Rare Elven sub-races, I don't think they're going to want to go to like the Water Elves or any of that stuff, but Ghost Elves were a really cool Dragon Magazine-specific 3.5 race that I really, really liked, and I'd love to see them actually published here. Um, but then again, they could just, like further break out like high elves and wood elves into like sun elves and moon elves and that whole thing ghostwise halflings um i tried for the life of me to remember what the deal was with ghostwise halflings um can't i keep thinking of strongheart halfling i think strongheart halfling was just a halfling with a feet if i remember correctly but anyway ghostwise halfling so we know that's an option uh under the couple pages for humans we have human languages so this might be um, I'm gonna guess more like dialects, like Luskin and things like that, where you have 
everybody's speaking common, but it's a different dialect of that, possibly. Uh, Ladies of the Golden Hills is listed under gnomes, so whatever, at least on the same page as gnomes. Um, it says, the sidebar, where did I, I lost it, deep gnome feet. So that must mean that the blurblin, the deep gnomes that are listed in the um, Elemental Evil Player's Handbook might be getting an official publishing, which again, that's sort of an official book anyway. Um, but maybe they refined the feet, which again is exciting to me because it's racial feats. We already knew that Half-Elf and Tiefling variants were coming. They kind of announced that in the teaser article. Here we go, Azamar. Um, this I'm very hopeful for because this is going to be a, this is making me think that Aladrin is going to be published. Azamar as an officially published race in a guidebook um, makes me think that maybe they'll tweak it and not give them such crappy stuff. Like, I think it was Light, Lesser Restoration, and Daylight. And Tieflings get Thaumaturgy, Hellish Rebuke, and Darkness. Those are way better. And resistance to uh, Necrotic and Radiant damage. Not as good as resistance to Fire damage. It's just all out better. So um, maybe they tweaked it. I guess we'll see. We'll also see this with the Swashbuckler to see how much stuff got tweaked and how much actual feedback there was on the playtest stuff, whether it was too weak, too strong, however. Um... Fun fact, all of the pre, all, all the published races, even playtest races, there is no one race that gives you plus two to wisdom at, at all. The only way to sort of get it is to round about it with human and get like, put a plus one in variant human and grab something that gives you a plus one to wisdom, like observant or resilient. Uh, but anyway, 121 lists spiked armor, which is something we have had in previous editions, which we haven't had. What's interesting is it looks like it's under Barbarian, so maybe that's a Barbarian trait or something Barbarians can only have access to, which is also interesting because Barbarians typically benefit more from not wearing armor. Um, then you have Uthgart Totems, which means we're probably going to get more Primal, I'm assuming Primal Path to uh, Totems, like you have the Bear Totem and the Wolf Totem, so it'll be different options. The Moon Stars under the Bards. Um, I believe that's just a type of Harper member, if my, not, if my memory serves. Uh, the Harpers and the Druids, which is on the same page, page 127, same as Fighter, so it's the end tail of the Druid piece. Um, again, this could just be a lore thing. Um, swashbucklers and two-weapon fighting, that obviously we know is going to be a thing, um, for rogues. And they said they kind of, they benefit more from swashbuckling. Arcane Spellcasters is a table listed under Sorcerers. Mage Sigils is listed under Arcane Tradition. And then Bladesinger Styles on the same page as the Cantrips. So we don't really get information whether or not what kind of class this is going to be. I'm still leaning towards Bladesinger being a wizard subclass, meaning the more melee-y wizard where the Eldritch Knight is the more, uh, it's the more fighter-y wizard whereas the blade singer is going to be the more wizardy fighter um is my thought but it's right around the same page as the cantrips knightly orders of faerun that kind of fits with this knights of the order which we know the paladin has the oath of the order or at least so dragon plus says uh, mercenaries of the north and the barbarian tribes of faerun which ties up with the uthgard tribe member um could be a lot of useful stuff um but let's see what else we've got Sorry for this being super zoomed in, but this is the Green Flame Blade Cantrip. Um, looks like this is going to be a big one for your Packed Blade Warlocks out there. As part of casting this spell, you must make a melee attack with a weapon against one creature within range, otherwise the spell fails. On a hit, the target suffers the attack's normal effects, and green fire leaps from the target to a different creature of your choice that you can see within 5 feet. The second creature takes fire damage equal to your spellcasting ability modifier. This spell's damage increases when you reach higher levels at level 5. The melee attack damage and extra fire uh, deals an extra 1d8 fire damage to the target, and the fire damage to the secondary character or secondary creature increases to 1d8 plus your spellcasting modifier. Both damage rolls increases by 1d8 at 11 and 17. So if you think about this, a blade pack the warlock can gain proficiency with any weapon by um, you know, making their blade packed weapon. They can also eventually get two attacks through one of their invocations and can also get the add their charisma modifier to their damage. 
uh, on top of it as necrotic damage with the life drinker uh, invocation. So this, let me just break this down for you. So you cast a spell and you make a melee attack. So you're using, say, a rapier, right? So it does dex to attack and it does a d8 plus your dex mod. So you do that to the enemy. So you stab him with your rapier and then uh, is it your... And green fire leaps from the target. You can see it takes damage to your... So say your charisma modifier is a 5, let's just say. So you stab this guy, it does stabbing, you know, piercing damage to this guy with your rapier, and then 5 fire damage jumps to the next guy. When you hit level 5, your melee attack now does your melee attack damage, 1d8 for your rapier, plus another d8 of fire damage, plus, you know, 3 for your, uh, your dex modifier, right? And then the fire damage that jumps to the next guy now does a d8 plus 5 in this situation. So that's huge. If you combo that with, this is a one, okay, this is a, okay, so this, how they kind of balance it, it's a one action spell. So you can't benefit from two attacks in a round if you have the, um, the one invocation that allows two attacks. However, this is a cantrip, so you can do this every turn. Um, so you could, theoretically, as a warlock with a five charisma modifier and the life drinker cantrip, or life drinker invocation rather, stab this guy, right? This is gonna do base weapon damage plus your, whatever your attacking modifier is, let's say three, like I said. You know what? Forget it, let's go all balls to the wall on this one. You use shillelagh, you got it through some ritual, uh, either through ritual casting um, the feet, you got it through I don't know, multi-classing, maybe you got it through Magic in Initiate. So you have a club, and your club uses your spellcasting mod for damage. So you're gonna hit this guy with your club that has Shillelagh cast on it, um, and you're concentrating on that. You hit this guy, it's gonna do 1d10, I think, uh, plus five for the Shillelagh damage. Then it's gonna do an additional five for your life drinker invocation. Then it's gonna do an extra 1d8 fire damage to that guy. And then the next guy next to him is gonna take another d8 plus five fire damage. That's pretty big for a spellcaster to be doing that kind of damage with melee with that level. I was gonna say at level five, but I think you have to be 12 to get the life drinker cantrip. So, I mean, there's some synergy there, but if you really love Packed Blade Warlock, and who's to say that one of the new invocate or the new class options doesn't make this even more viable? Uh, again, it could work for a sorcerer, it could work for a wizard, by all means, but I feel like it's more targeted towards that. Um, if you're a bard, perhaps, and you gain access to this through your magical secrets or something like that, that's also an option. Um, but just throwing it out there. Next up, we have the Urban Bounty Hunter background. Um, this I really like because it gives you a lot of options. So, you know, you're a bounty hunter. I'm not going to read you the whole background of all this stuff. I'll read you the, the important parts. Um, so skill proficiencies, you choose two from a list of four, which I like rather than two solid. So choose two from deception, insight, persuasion, and stealth, which is great because that gives you a lot of variety. Tool proficiencies, choose two from among one type of gaming set, one musical instrument, and thieves tools. This is great, this is another way for you to get access to thieves tools and maybe an instrument or a gaming set or whatever, you balance this out with the rest of your class features. A set of clothing appropriate to your duties and a pouch containing 20 gold. And your feature is you are in frequent contact with people in this segment of society that your chosen quarries move through. These people might be associated with the criminal underworld, the rough and tumble folks of the streets, or high members of society. This connection comes in the form of contact in any city you visit, a person who provides information about the people and places of the local area. And then what's great is under the suggested characteristics for like your trait, your ideal, they tie it back into the player's handbook and say like, to figure all that stuff out, modify the entries when appropriate that fit your bounty hunter. For instance, your bond might involve bounty hunters or organizations of individuals that uh, employ you. Your ideal could be associated with your determination, uh, always to catch a quarry, blah, blah, blah. It's nice because it allows you to take, uh, it's, I'm sorry, it says use the tables for the criminal background. That's what I meant to say. So it's like, okay, you have this book, but there's still reason to keep your player's handbook around aside from the base information. So that's pretty cool. 
You get a little picture of a Nothgard Bard uh, tribe member and some text around them here as well. And finally, we received the Mastermind Roguish Archetype, and we actually get a little sneak preview of the Swashbuckler. So, Mastermind. When you choose the Archetype at third level, you gain proficiency with Disguise Kit, the Forgery Kit, and one gaming set of your choice. So this can, you can get a massive amount of proficiencies this way. You also learn two languages of your choice. Additionally, you can unerringly mimic the speech patterns and accent of a creature that you hear speak for at least one minute, allowing you to pass yourself off as a native speaker of a particular land provided that you know the language. So right there, that pretty much eliminates the need for the actor feat in uh, the base game, because that's basically one of the things that let, let you do. Also at level 3, you can use the help action as a bonus action, which is huge. The help action grants one of your allies, typically that's within 5 feet of you, advantage on whatever they're doing, whether it be a check, an attack, whatnot. Additionally, though, when you use the help action to aid an ally in attacking a creature, the target can be within 30 feet of you rather than 5 feet if they can see or hear you. So now you don't have to be, you're a rogue, right? And you're backed up and your buddy's attacking this guy and you're like, hey, I'm going to help you out as a bonus action. You get advantage. Now you have advantage and you're next to this guy and now I can get advantage and make my attack and make my sneak attack or whatever. Uh, level 9, you kind of get a variant of the Battlemaster Fighters kind of way to size people up. If you spend at least one minute observing or interacting with another creature outside of combat, you can learn certain information about its capabilities compared to your own. The DM tells you if the creature is equal to, superior, or inferior in regard to two of the following characteristics of your choice. Intelligence score, wisdom score, charisma score, class levels, if any. At the DM's option, you might also realize you know a piece of the creature's history or one of its personality traits, if it has any. This is like the... I feel like the fighter has a better one because they can ask for current hit points and armor class, which is big when you're fighting. But this is really good if you're fighting spellcasters and you're like, oh crap. Let's figure out what's the wisdom score on this druid. And it's like 12 and you're like, alright, so he's not going to hit us with anything too crazy damaging. Or if I'm going to go hit him with a charisma based saving throw, I know, you know I want to plane shift this guy out of here. I want my buddy to do it. Well, at least I know he's not going to have that great of a charisma. Uh, num level 12 or 13, you get Misdirection. Beating at 13th level, you can sometimes cause another creature to suffer an attack meant for you. When you are targeted by an attack while a creature within 5 feet of you is granting you cover against that attack, you can use your reaction to have the target, uh, have the attack target that creature instead of you. So, something that I often forget, I'm going to try to remember f going forward, is if you're here and there's a creature here attacking you, and somebody's attacking you and you move like behind that creature that creature is technically providing you i think with half cover so that's plus two on your ac because they have to go around you which is how they sort of dealt with like removing point blank shot and, and all that kind of those that feet chain from 3.5 rather than having to have a special feat to allow you to fire in combat you just gain cover and this kind of is similar to the one ranger feature the hunter ranger gets where you can kind of and like i think there's a couple of feats as well sort of like a sentinel version that lets you do this uh and at 17 soul of deceit uh your thoughts can't be read by telepathy or other means unless you allow it you can present false thoughts by making a charisma deception check contested by the mind readers of wisdom and sight check Additionally, no matter what you say, magic that would determine if you're lying or if you're telling the truth indicates that you're being truthful. If you so choose, and you can't be compelled to tell the truth by magic. So this is great because this takes a lot. This takes sort of, um, I think there's either an item or a couple of feet chains or, um, or spells or things like that that allow you to um, not have your mind read. Uh, I think a couple of different classes have that. And that last bit is basically the effects of, the, I think it's an 8th level bard spell, Glibness, where you can tell anybody anything you want, and they believe you whether or not they cat, you're under the effects of truth uh, sensing magic. So that's really cool. And then again, the list, little bit of swashbuckle that we get here. Uh, when you choose the archetype at level 3, you learn how to land and strike a slip, uh, land a strike and then slip away without reprisal. During your turn, if you make a melee attack against a creature, the creature can't make opportunity attacks against you for the rest of your turn. And that's called Fancy Footwork, that is exactly as it is printed in the playtest sw uh, swashbuckler. So I'm hopeful, in my mind, I hope that the swashbuckler, or the Fancy Footwork piece, 
the third level thing, and the other thing that they get at third level where they add their charisma to their initiative, and also can do sneak attack with a melee attack as long as there's nobody else around them. I hope that stays the same, but then I hope some of the later stuff changes, because I feel like it was kind of lacking. Um, especially like the level 9 feature I think was really lacking in my mind. Um, but anyway guys, that's kind of the main thing, that's what happened. There was, um, be on the lookout for the Wizards of the Coast, um, either their official, the D&D, um, either their Twitch or their YouTube to put the videos up, because my god, were some of those things, they had me laughing a lot. Some of them, I'll admit, were not that great. Some of the break stuff was funny, they did a hot pepper challenge, they did a hot wing challenge, um... That was really funny watching people eat habanero peppers, um, and they're crying trying to do interviews. Uh, one of the games late last night had a puppet. There was somebody whose character, they were below the table and they had like a Muppet cleric that they were just controlling the whole time. It was awesome. Um, but yeah, the only other thing I want to comment on, guys, is uh, you can't, again, you can't still donate to Extra Life. Um, my comment is, what's up with Dragon Plus? I thought it was supposed to be a monthly magazine, basically, that's released. It's been the entire month of September, and we've only ever had three issues. We had the first issue, we had, which was Elemental Evil, which think about how long ago that was. Then we had one that was all about video games, and then one about Rage of Demons, which if you look back a while ago, I had the video on it. We went the entire month of September without a Dragon Plus. Um, so, yeah, and it's, you know, it's supposed to be, I'm pretty sure... A monthly uh, monthly issue kind of a thing so we never got uh, one in September it's already October so what's the deal did they just not have enough stuff did they want I mean it seems like a lot of the stuff is keyed off of the big releases so this month is gonna have the Sword Coast Adventure Guide and it's gonna have Sword Coast Legends which has been a lot of their topics um, so maybe they're gonna wait and try to get as much information on that in here but like I don't know, I thought it was a really cool thing, and I guess it's free, so I can't really complain too much about it, but I was actually really looking forward to it, hoping we'd get some more teaser-style stuff ahead of time, but I guess not. So anyway, guys, did you watch the D&D livestream? Did you have a good time? Did you like it? Did you donate? What kind of stuff did you get? Uh, when I get my stuff in the mail, I'll have to be sure to like take some, either do a video or, or something like that. Um... But again, we have had, uh, just as a one little last bit, we have had requests, uh, Sean and I, to do um, player-based guides. We are actually working on that. We have filmed the Barbarian Guide, and we have filmed the Bard Guide. Um, we're working on going through all the main classes, and then we're going to go through and do everything all again once we get the new stuff from the Sword Coast Adventure Guide. Um, we're also working on a small segment called 5-Minute D&D Character Creation, where him and I tag team to do... Uh, to build a D&D character in under five minutes to just show you how easy it can be if you know what you're doing or if you're, you know, it, it's not as intimidating as it seems. Um, again, we have, uh, we tried to do a stream last Tuesday of an in-person game. It didn't really work. I'm thinking I might just do a recording of that and put that up on Wednesdays. Uh, and our live stream is still going to be continuing on Thursdays. We're playing Elemental Evil in Fantasy Grounds. Um, and lastly, I'm also going to be working on an intro to D&D video, so if somehow you found this video and you've never played Dungeons & Dragons before, or you have friends or family that have never played and have reservations, send me what, uh, ask them, what, what kind of hang-ups do you have about Dungeons & Dragons? What rumors have you heard? I'm probably going to make a separate video about this, but I want to take as many of those questions and things like that and go through them and answer questions and issues that people have and try to debunk a lot of the rumors that's based around this game. Granted, it's a lot more mainstream now than it was 10, 20, 30 years ago, 40 years ago at this point, but there's still a lot of stigma around it. I've got a, a bunch of questions already, but I want to work through this. I want to go through, let's answer your D&D questions and your reservations up front. What do you need to start playing? What kind of stuff do you need to prepare before your first game? If you're looking to do the uh, eventually, what kind of stuff do you need to bring and what do you need to have prepared? Just to kind of get that like a D&D 101 video out there. And then if you kind of get in that and you start playing, you want to look at more of the advanced guides. And that's when we're going to have the the player DM guides for the different campaigns that exist already. We're going to have, you know, the, the class guides and things like that. Um, again, I have so many other reviews I need to do. Like those, I keep talking about the miniature reviews and I need to do that. Um, so anyway, I'm going to get some. I ordered some as part of the Extra Life stuff. So maybe I'll review those as well. 
But anyway, guys, sorry, this this is for a week where there wasn't a whole ton of knowledge minus the extra life stuff, which I guess was a lot. This is a pretty long video. Um, but anyway, guys, hope you had a great tabletop extra life weekend, and I'll see you on Tuesday for some more D&D life let's plays. See you next time.